Hello, my name is Ragnela Popovic and I'm sitting here um, at, in Washington DC at Word Learning with my colleague and friend Nino Flaherty. Hi Ragnela. And today we are going to talk about a very, very important topic, which is task types and grammar. So Neil, you know that in one of our favorite books, um, doing task-based learning, uh, Jane and they, uh, Dave Willis identify six task types. That's so, right, yeah. yes. And they include uh, listing, ordering and sorting, comparing, problem, problem solving, solving, sharing personal experiences, yes. and I think it's projects and creative tasks. Yes, that's yeah. the last yeah. one. And that really looks very good on paper, but I've heard from many teachers that they have a problem once they start adopting task-based learning and they have to teach with mandatory textbooks and, and they have to develop a task and out of that define language focus, grammar focus. Well, it certainly is not without its challenges. Yes. But having said that, I guess the simplest thing to say about it is if we take our time, look at it calmly, Focus first on what the text contains, what's the topic, yes. and then maybe consider the level of our students and say, okay, how about we give them a task, which maybe at a lower level might involve listing certain things, or maybe ordering things or putting them, sorting them into the correct order and so on, or comparing. They all feel like uh, simple, or at least can be simple yeah. uh, lower level tasks for lower level students, students maybe at A2 or A1. I think it's best to focus first on the task we want them to do and maybe concern ourselves with the language sort of after that has been figured out. Right, let's, let's just work with a very concrete example. Okay. It's a simple text uh, which can be used for low, with lower level learners but you know, if task is more complex, we can also use it with advanced learners. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, if we start from this text, what kind of, say, listing, ordering, sorting tasks can we come up with? What okay, I well, I mean, straight off the bat, it comes to my mind that for Thanksgiving, it's something where there is a family feast, essentially. Yeah. So you need to figure out who's going to come along, and you maybe need to contact those people in advance. So I guess you can list who's going to be at your Thanksgiving dinner. Of course, the other thing about th Thanksgiving dinners is that people typically treat it as a sort of potluck. The guest list will bring along their favorite sides, their favorite desserts, their favorite vegetables. So maybe you can do a list of, well, who makes great macaroni and cheese? or who will absolutely does the best roasted vegetables? And so you can make a list of who'll bring what. Right. So Which is a little more complex absolutely than right. just listing who's coming. You're listing who's coming, so mother is, we, we can, you can simply, extra grammar for that. Right, grammar. yes. So, so, who is coming, is it present continuous, uh -huh. right? Who is coming, present continuous to express certainty in the future, right? Sure, exactly, And yes. ordering and sorting, um, what kind of grammar do we need to play up with? Well, we could look at, maybe, I mean, we can do, look, you could work on the future, for example. Well, uh, Red Miller will bring the chicken pot pie and Naz will bring her best mixed fruit dessert and, you know, you can list things like that. So maybe futures there. Absolutely. And uh, also, <clears throat> if we talk about, so say, listing, you, you talk about your favorite Thanksgiving dish, so you list the ingredients. Ah, okay. now you're getting right. complex. Yes, That's a bit this is bringing it up to a higher level student now. Right, right, right. And then with that, quantities, expressing quantities. Right. So that this is how it might, might work. 